This video is about molding knives that fit in this cutter block and a question from Mr. Johnson and of course he doesn't allow me to uh, stitch his comments and so I can't use his comment but what we want to know here is the rake angle of this cutter block. Let me explain. Now all kinds of cutter blocks have all kinds of different rake angles and that is the actual angle at which if I draw a line through center, that that cutter is actually attacking. In, in saw blades, we would say, you know, is that a negative or positive rake? Uh, you know, you'd see that. And, and not all cutter blocks are the same. You can see there's, you know, they're somewhat standard. Even this one, see, it's, it's quite far back, right? So that creates, what is that angle right there? That's the rake angle. Now, not all heads for shapers have a positive rake. Here is a French spindle. So this is an old type of head. These are outlawed in the UK. The knife goes right through the center of the spindle. So it has a neutral rake, no rake. It's like a, a high speed scraper. You grind one face, balance the back, and you rub your work against that part of the head. And it would do short runs. Very easy to do, very easy to grind the shape because you literally grind the shape that you want the molding to be. Now you might be asking, why, why does that even matter? Why does it matter what the angle is? I, I just order my router bits and I say I want a quarter round and I want this and I want that. Well, it does matter because, um, well, it will matter if, if you need to match something. If you want to draw a shape that you want to reproduce as a molding, you'll need to know what the rake angle is. So when you order knives to put in, they're held at the right angle so they produce the right shape. Let me explain. So how do you determine the rake angle of a cutter block? Well, luckily in my manual, there was a drawing of the head. These are the plates that you're looking at that can be removed. And so our knife projects out of there. You can see I drew a line across that. And so that's gonna be where my line is, okay? Now I took one of my protractor things here and what I did is I went from the center to where it exits the head and I drew that line right there. I then put just a uh, 90 and this little area here is the protracted angle which I then just put a thing on here and I determined that that is 38 degrees. Now you might say, well, it's 38 degrees from there to that cutting circle, but because the knife can project further out, let's say out to here, then that angle for where the cut is, is in that low angle. See how the projection of the knife can change the rake angle. Do you see? If I say I'm gonna project the knife out that far from the cutting circle, and I draw that line, it's gonna be there. So that is the rake angle of the head, this is the rake angle of the knife. So what does that matter? Well, you see, I'm producing this molding, okay? Let's, and it has to be a perfect half round. So I cannot just grind that as a half circle. I actually have to grind that to fit that molding at the rake angle. So it's not really sitting at 90. It's sitting at that. The, the, that's the shape. How do we develop that? Well, if you have the molding and you know the rake angle is 38 degrees, cut a little sliver off the end at 38 degrees. See how I've cut 38 degrees segment and that develops a shape. Do you see that shape? And I'll show you the difference of that shape because here is the same molding, cut at 90 degrees, and you can see the development of the shape is considerably different than the molding. That is the knife grinding shape. You can trace that, just like I have here, onto a knife, grind it, and it will produce that shape if the grinding head is at 80 degrees. So you see, I just cut the rake angle, 
develops the shape. Now, how do you do it if I don't have a molding and I'm developing shapes from scratch? There are a number of ways, but I would suggest every cabinet making shop has uh, Brian Walmsley's book on uh, workshop geometry, but also uh, how to develop, uh, well, just how to develop all kinds of different geometry. And to me, Geometry is a great way to verify that you know what you're doing. So there's a cross. See the cross here? This corner here is the shape of the molding. So this molding comes up, goes in. It's a quarter round, goes in. That's the shape of that molding. So what we want to do is uh, pla place that, and that could be full scale. It doesn't matter what size. It, 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 it would, you would want to draw that full size, I'm sorry. Okay, then you're going to just make horizontal lines off of this baseline at the fillet location. So here and here and wherever you want to transfer. And then take a compass from the center point and transfer those down so that those lines have been transferred to 180 degrees from 90. You're then going to project those back down to this vertical line at the rake angle. In this case, it'll be 38 degrees. And then project those lines through. And you notice what it's done is it's elongated the molding only in its length, the projection outside of the head. And then you just continue the straight lines down because we're only uh, extending the length of the molding. So that would be the grind of your knife. Anyway, I hope that helps. Um, and the reason for uh, knowing what your grinding angles are and stay tuned. I will love to show you the uh, This running a molding and we'll see how it actually works uh, With me grinding the right angles